Hello there, very good evening and welcome to Prime Time News. I'm Sonali Monica Baduge. Hello there, very good evening. I'm Joel Aotsko and here's a look at this evening's headline making stories. President states that he will accomplish any challenge for the country and its people. SLFP looks into the possibility of contesting upcoming polls under the leadership of a neutral person. Elections Commissioner meets with party representatives. Dilith Jayavira, Varuni Amunugama, Nalaka Godaheva and Anand Raj Amrasekara to be examined in connection with financial irregularities at the CSC. President Maitri Pala Sirisena says that he is prepared to overcome any challenge on behalf of the people and the country. The technical laboratory of the Usa Pite Revisa de Mahavidyalaya in Kulia Pite was declared open by President Maitri Pala Sirisena this morning. When Lalit Bisanayaka was speaking, he said that as the president, I would have to face many challenges. I was elected to this position to accept those challenges and love those challenges. I need to mention that I am prepared to overcome any challenge on behalf of the people and the country. Speaking further, the president said that the government would take all required decisions to eradicate drugs. Heroin, mat peti, mat kudu, mat bima, niti virodi. Heroin, intoxicant pills, drugs, illegal liquor are flowing into society. Among us, there are persons who only value to the rupee and the dollar and not the lives of the children. Today, they will undertake any caddish behavior in order to destroy your lives. As a government, we are formulating new rules and regulations on eradicating drugs. At present, there is an island wide campaign. As the government, we will take every decision that is required. A meeting between political party representatives and the elections commissioner took place at the election secretariat today. Secretaries of political parties, representatives, police and civil organization representatives were present for the meeting. We requested that elections be conducted in a manner that will be fair to all political parties. What we have seen is that the violation of election laws has commenced. Elections will take place according to the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. We hope that the election powers vested with the 19th Amendment will be executed by the Election Commissioner. We hope for a free and fair elections than the elections held before. We believe that the elections can be held in a free and fair manner. For the first time in history, the Prime Minister has come forward. And requesting for the cost of the elections is a good thing. If the country moves on like this, there will be good governance. We would like to contest in the country. We will contest as we can. All the police officers are committed to ensuring that a free and fair election will take place. 
Will former President Mahinda Rajapaksa be given nominations to contest the August polls? Was the question raised by journalists at a press conference convened today by the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Several party representatives, including Dr. Sarat Amunugama, were present at the press conference, which was held at Dali Road, Colombo. We inquired as to how we should reach a common consensus with the other parties in the alliance and submitted a report to the President. This report contains 18 points which includes under what sort of leadership would we head into the polls. Do not ask anything further than that. Persons from both sides who could enter an agreement would be brought in to resolve the issues. We also discussed the future task of Chama Rajapaksa. Many nominations were made, but it is all in the level of discussions. <laughs> No, we looked into that. During the discussions, the primary need was for all to come together and move ahead. There can be various views on the achieving this. There are three opinions. Some say that Mahindra Rajapaksa should not be allowed to contest the polls. Some say that they cannot contest without Mahindra Rajapaksa. Then there are some who say that Mahindra Rajapaksa, Chandrika Bandara Nayaka should be there and they also cannot win without the leadership of President Maithri Palasiri Sena. So they all will bring in someone who will appear for all three opinions. These views are there. The final decision that we take will be the one that will be taken to defeat the United National Party. Maitri Palasiri Sena defeated Mahindra Rajapaksa six months ago and rejected all those who committed wrongs. Can he say that Mahindra has not done any wrong and that he is the next Prime Minister? This is the reality. We need to think about all of this and undertake a neutral journey. Interviews to select candidates to contest under the Sri Lanka Freedom Party ticket at the August parliamentary elections were held today as well. Interviews took place over the past three days at the SLFP party headquarters in Dali Road, Colombo. Provincial councillors, Pradesh Sabha members and a number of new faces were called in for the interviews today. We need to bring everyone in the party together. When we all need to act together, we need to join our policy factors and not on personal factors. We are of the view that we need one system to operate in the party. We need to move forward from the lessons learned and not to maintain a personal stance. If a wrong is committed, you need to humble to accept it. If not, there is no point in presenting facts to justify your mistake. Minister A.H.M. Fauzi commented on the former president's return to contest the polls. There are millions of people with us. 2,000 to 3,000 persons will simply come to contest. We need to strengthen the party and create a program for all to move forward. We need such leadership. There is no second tier. I will contest because people want to. Who will one contest with if the SLFP does not give nominations? Here are some of the views expressed on the political four. I was of the view that Mahindra Rajapaksa would make a groundbreaking statement. But finally, after dragging on and on, what did he say? He said he will contest. But we do not know what symbol or group he will represent. I too will contest. Anyone can say that they will contest. Some have become afraid. In this election, what we ask is this. Is it Ranil or Mahinda? Nothing more than that. He is splitting the SLFP in two. He is contesting this election because of the grief for power. He needs to accept defeat. It is a group of rogues who are behind him that are pushing him. We believe that all the leaders of the party can come together and contest the elections. Today they are attempting to split the party and see the UNP achieve victory. We are making calculations based on algebra. That is why some political leaders fail. A plus B equals to X plus Y. That's how even our people would fail in the future.
We warned the Silla Field Alliance that if you allow Mahindra Rajapaksa to contest, it will be like handing over chickens to the wolves. You're watching News First. The Colombo Magistrates Court today granted permission to investigate transactions at the Colombo Stock Exchange made by Dilit Jayavira Varuni Amunugama, former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission Dr. Nalika Godeheva and S. Anandaraja Amarasekara. Police media spokesperson ASP Ruan Gunasekara stated that permission was granted by court after a request was made by the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division. He added that the investigations were will be carried out on a number of irregularities that had taken place at the CSE during the recent past, including insider trading and market manipulation. The Colombo Additional Magistrate, Nishant Paris, issued two orders to Deutsche Bank and the Securities and Exchange Commission regarding a large-scale financial irregularity said to have taken place during a share transaction involving an Indian-based company and Lanka Hospitals Private Limited. The court ordered a full disclosure of bank account details of Dilith Jaiwira, Nalika Godaheva, Varuni Amrugama and S. Anandaraja Amrasekara. Making submissions to court, the Financial Crimes Investigations Division said that a complaint has been lodged with the division by consultant oncologist Dr. S. M. Alexander regarding a large-scale financial fraud said to have taken place during a share transaction involving Lanka hospitals. The complaint notes that the financial irregularity had taken place when the state owned 65.4% of the shares at Lanka hospitals. The Financial Crimes Investigations Division submitted to court that the bank accounts of Dilith, Nalaka, Varuni and Anandaraja at Bank of Ceylon, Nation Trust Bank and several other banks have been already examined. The additional magistrate ordered that the names used by the individuals in question during the transaction and all other related material to be submitted to court through a report. The magistrate ordered that the report should entail name of the account holder, national identity card number of the account holder, if any, the name of the joint account holder, the date in which the account was opened, if the account is a company bank account, the address and the identity card number of the individual who opened the account, whether or not the account is active, and in the event the account is closed, what is the reason behind the closure of the bank account? The magistrate ordered that the heads of the respective banks to submit the bank statements of the four individuals between January 2011 and June 30, 2011, to court. The case will be taken up again on the 10th of September. The wife of Western Provincial Council Chief Minister Prasan Ranathunga was questioned by the Financial Crimes Investigation Division today. Police media spokesperson ASP Ruan Gunasekara said that she was questioned over a complaint that was filed against the chief minister on a 5 million rupee financial fraud over a land in Kolonava. He added that the wife of the chief minister was questioned from 10.30 this morning until 5.30 in the evening. Former parliamentarian Sunil Handunethi, who was a member of the COPE committee, exposed details from the COPE committee investigation regarding the controversial central bank bond transaction. COPE committee released two to three reports. The first report was compiled, but it wasn't made public. The report was set aside and another was compiled. This report was also set aside and another was compiled. So all three reports came from three different directions. Even though the three reports came from different directions, nothing against Arjuna Mahendran could be proven. So this is the truth. Nothing has been proven. Officials from the Central Bank admits to the Committee on Public Enterprises, or COP, that they had to follow the request made by the Central Bank Governor to disregard the procedure adopted by the Public Debt Management Department. The central bank governor was at the trading floor of the bond auction on two occasions. On the first occasion, he arrived at the auction at around 10.45 during the auction. He has also inspected the auction list. The interest rate in the market, which is at 9.53, increased to 11.73 due to the acceptance of bonds for 10 billion. If the central bank governor had not intervened in this transaction, the next alternative would have been to call for a bond worth 2,603 million at the interest rate of around 10%. Then what is the problem? 
This bid would not go to the company with connections to the governor, which is placed 26th on the bidding list. This broker company directly obtained 2 billion rupees, which is 2,000 million. The Bank of Ceylon obtained 5 billion on behalf of this broker company. So after the central bank governor arrives here at 10.45, at 10.48, the main broker of the central bank gets a phone call requesting them to reserve 13 billion as security. However, what we want to know is how can the central bank trust a company like Perpetual Treasuries who called Bank of Ceylon at 10.48 asking for the auction to be stopped at 11 and reserve such a large sum of money. All this was done not using their personal money but with the money of the Bank of Ceylon. What does the UNP administration have to say about this? Do they even deny that such a transaction had taken place? Meanwhile, speaking at a media briefing, former parliamentarian Bandula Gunavardhana expressed the following views. I would like to start with a little breaking news story. Financial market sources say that the former governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, who is held responsible for the financial fraud that took place in the Central Bank in broad daylight, has fled the country. For the first time in history, a governor has fled the country using his impounded passport without the knowledge of the financial board and handing over duties to a deputy governor. The financial board where transactions in millions, billions and trillions takes place should protect the trust placed by the public. However, today head of this board is not here. So how can the country function? The National Dangerous Drugs Control Board says that most parents are unaware that their children are addicted to drugs. As news first delves deep into the drug menace prevalent in the country, we met with a group of children housed at a, at a rehabilitation center in Kandy. News first, Chaturanga Hapu Arachi reports. This is not a usual game of cricket played by employees of News First. This is the treatment and rehabilitation center in Kandy. The youngsters you see behind me are youngsters who are trying to win back their life from the drug menace. Let's take a look at their story. Around 20 children who have fallen victim to drugs are receiving treatment at the Youth Prevention, Treatment and Rehabilitation Center in Kandy that is run by the National Dangerous Drugs Control Board. The youngest among this group of children is a nine-year-old, a resident of Malabe. <laughs> Every child housed at this rehabilitation center has a different story to tell and represent a cross-section of society. Parental attention and care is a common characteristic evident in their stories. Many who we spoke to said that the lack of parental affection and care is the primary cause for this. It is quite rare that children of high income families are admitted for treatment to our rehabilitation centers. But children from the two lower classes, the middle income and low income families admit their children for treatment. If either your own child or a child of a relative is a victim of substance abuse, we are ready to provide our faithful service to help them. A drug-free nation.
leads to a rug free parliament. Think before you vote. In other local news, signatures were obtained for the March 12th declaration today as well. The March 12th declaration contains eight criteria that needs to be looked into by political parties when providing nominations for candidates. The campaign to obtain one million signatures for the March 12th declaration to field suitable persons for politics commenced its journey from Kandy today. Signatures were obtained opposite the Kandy bus stop amidst the participation of religious leaders and many others. In order to ensure that the clean political environment forges ahead, we need to elect suitable candidates. Our objective is to create persons who can act intelligently. If the people are given a list of clean candidates, we the people can elect the suitable persons at the 2015 parliamentary elections and send them into parliament. If good governance needs to be established, we need to elect suitable persons. When providing nominations, political parties must refrain from providing nominations to rogues, thieves, commission seekers, rapists and persons who commit acts detrimental to society. After passing candy, the campaign reached Kegol to obtain more signatures for the March 12th declaration. Parliament needs to be cleansed. We must come together to ensure that this task is carried out. If drug peddlers and ethanol dealers are involved, the entire society will be destroyed. Sajid Premadasa, the Minister of Housing and Samurudhi says that miracles were only experienced by persons in the previous regime. Minister Sajid Premadasa declared open the new school building at the Surya Baba National School. If miracles took place in Hambantara district, why did not any of the school buildings come up? The government in the past had not spent a single cent to build the Surya Baba National School. You cannot obtain a bigger commission from building classroom. However, millions can be skimmed from the constructions of expressways and carpeting the roads. So where is the miracle? Miracles only took place in the pockets of the rulers. Former MP Buddhikapathirana says that the status of the public representatives has been downgraded as a result of the political thieves who steal the votes. Certain individuals commenced the distribution on the 13th of July while we put a stop to ours on that day. The greatest destruction that takes place in the country is the criminals, abusers, liquor dealers, drug peddlers and ethanol dealers entering parliament. The next is persons who steal the votes and distribute goods during the elections. That is why the respect the people have on the public representatives has downgraded. High nutrition packs were distributed among the underweight children in Henavala Matara under the Samadhi Kakula program. United National Party Western Provincial Councillor S.M. Marika attended an event to distribute sports equipment in Maradana today. Will we give nominations for persons who made teachers kneel? Will we give nominations for persons who have 200 children and hosted parties? Will we give nominations to persons who have charges against them in Kandy, Colombo, Kurnagala and Kalutara? Will we give nominations for drug addicts and murderers? If nominations are not given for drug peddlers and others, and if there is no state funding, if acts of violence does not take place, and if the mechanism of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party does not work, how will Mahinda Wajapaksa become the Prime Minister? The expose dialogue took place today as well at the UNP headquarters, Sirikota. The defeated Mahindra Gwajapaksa said that he was ready to face the electric chair, but today he is afraid to face the commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption. He does not even have the strength of Shashi Vikavansa. Mahindra Gwajapaksa is a leader who cheated off from the silk cloth. Gifts for weddings were also given by spending state funds. State funds were also spent on the dancers that took place at Temple Trees. During the floods and landslides in 2014, the Wajapaksa regime had defrauded 648 million rupees. When children were admitted to grade 1, Shwant Wajapaksa had said to make financial donations to the Carlton Preschool. 
කියලා දෙනවා මේ කාල්ටන් පෙර පාසලට කේක මුදල් පරිත්‍යාග කරන්න කියලා. මේ සීරි සාක්ෂි පුදුමා මේ ලබා දෙන කියනවද? ඔව් මේ 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 දැන් Yes I do. We discussed a number of matters here. I cannot present the evidence of which the investigations are ongoing. Me yana dewal me wala saakshi mata denna ba. That is relating to the admission of students. We will present it to the FCID in the future. If you want, we can give it to you as well. Did what? Can I FCID? FCID here. That. One thing. 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 No, that was stated with responsibility. Murderers too are granted bail. However, the actual culprit receives the punishment 10 or 12 years later. They are out on bail, but the cases continue. In. Some hope to implement the law on Mahinda Wajpaksa the same way he did to Sarath Fonseca. The people too hope for that. Kya kya atma karna bala purutu na janata wat bala purutu. Abey, tumi mene sab kiyo nahi the na. Budhu man kiyo, budhu man le sab kiyo. I have evidence, but the law was implemented on Sarath Fonseca, not according to the legal framework that he was bound with. <laughs> yes, that can be done in a way that the investigations will not be obstructed. Starting our sports news with some cricket. Sri Lanka's new fast bowling fine, Dushman the Chamira, ruled out of the third and final test against Pakistan, which commences in Palle Kale tomorrow. Both sides are pulling out all the stops to break the one-all deadlock after Pakistan won the first test by 10 wickets and Sri Lanka responded with a seven-wicket victory in the second. Both teams took part in the final practice sessions today ahead of the third test. Still could go with the two spinners but uh, there is option we could go with three seamers or with uh, one spinner. But is uh, we are confident and uh, we got good resources so hoping uh, to do well in this test match. Sri Lankan vice captain Lalit Tirimane said that the new players are ready to shoulder the responsibilities of veterans Kumar Sangakkara and Mahela Jayawardena. This team ke loku aduak Mahela saha Kumar netiye ke It's a strange experience to be without Mahela and Sanga but we have some good young players who are ready to step in. We will have the opportunity to play better in the next game. Team ke the thing apita honda avastha tino ilanga tarage test match ek khondara karan. Firmana also elaborated on the team that will take to the field tomorrow. Then Upul Tarang Pamina Tibina team. Upul Tarang has been included. He will play at number 3 in the batting lineup. We will use three seamers and one spinner. As the series is tied at one all, the third test will be decisive. We hope to win the game. Sri Lanka. One all nisa da egulan enne dinan tarange. Din aniwaryema apith balanne api kohomari tarage dinanna thama ekama balawaruthuma. And finally in sports news tonight a media briefing was convened in Colombo today on the first ever commando 4x4 expedition organized by the Sri Lanka Army's commando regiment Sports First is incidentally the media sponsor for this experience the 4x4 expedition is organized as a fundraising event for the commando regiment's infrastructure facility developments and to explore the beauty of the country's eastern part while promoting adventure sports in Sri Lanka The official website of the Commando 4x4 expedition was launched today at the Nelum Pokuna Theatre. 